to uh, Day of the Dead time in Mexico, they're going to make a skull mask for your school. Una calavera. And, um, so, let's get started here. This, they, take, they take turns. Both brothers learn this skill from their father, Juan Orta, who is a mask maker. And they use these masks in fiestas that they celebrate in their village and in different villages uh, in the region where they live, even throughout Mexico. The masks you see over on that display were all made by uh, Avedo, Manuel, and their brother Juan Jose. The reason they're so shiny is they paint them with automobile paint. It's a, a lacquer-based paint, uh, very resistant. They actually use those masks, they wear those, those devil masks up top. They wear them in a dance, in a special play, where they have a battle between good versus evil. Um, they have various characters. This is the Hermitage. This represents a wise, holy man. Sometimes they add a little bit of hair from the animals. This is goat skin. They twist it really thin. And they stick it right above to represent their eyelashes. It also hides the eyeballs. Uh, this is a decorative piece here, a mermaid. This piece is actually used in the fiesta. Uh, this, this owl is a decorative piece as well as that. They like to carve and using the mask as a medium. Now these can be several hundred dollars. This is three hundred eighty dollars. That's a lot of money. For, not that bad for a collector in a gallery. That'd be five, six, seven hundred dollars. Um, but still, that's a lot of money if you just want a little souvenir. So they make these cool little miniature masks. They're much more affordable. Right now, they're all getting ready for Dia de los Muertos. So you see lots of images of masks. Yeah, and skulls and skeletons. Here's one beanie, you know, the beanie where the one side is a devil, the one side is a skull. They will add animal hair, as I mentioned on the eyelashes. This is a tigre, the tiger. They have the hair, the whiskers are made out of wild boar. So they like to incorporate them. Avedo, the man who's carving right now, likes to make these picudos. These are little cuervos, little crows. He gives them like little Bart Simpson hairdo there, made out of the, the wild boar. Got a skin in What they do, once the masks, they carve the wood while it's still very green and soft. Uh, because it's easier with the tools that they have. Now we've got a couple of masks to pass around. This is one that was carved a few years ago uh, by the father, and this is made on a basswood, the kind of wood that we use here in the United States. You can take a kind of look at it and pass it around. So you can see what it's like to wear those. You imagine you're in a dance and you're having to battle other people, and you don't, you don't have a lot of peripheral vision. Here's a really neat one. This is made out of copal. This is the wood that they use in Mexico. And you can see one side is la vida, life, and one side is la muerte. Uh, la muerte. And death. Yeah. The tool he's using now, I'm oh, sorry, is called an angaro. The angaro is, uh, a, uh, in English, is called a, a curved adze. And you can see that's used to scoop out the, the wood behind the mask. They'll also do some roughing in in a little bit. As you can imagine, this is extremely dangerous. He's going to let him just focus on his work there because um, most carvers up here will actually hold the work in a vise and use a mallet and a chisel. But he actually holds it with one hand, carves uh, with the other one. The tools are their design. They make the design, they get, bring it over to a blacksmith, and then the blacksmith will. The Spanish word for tool is herramienta, and the man who makes the herramienta is un herrero, or a uh, blacksmith. Often these skills are taught to people within their family. They learn from their father. Their father had no one uh, to teach him. He was a little boy, he wanted to be in the fiesta, he didn't have any money to buy a mask, so he uh, sort of snuck into his uncle's uh, workshop and you know took a couple tools and in the spare time carved a mask on his own. He went into the dance and one of his friends liked it so much he said, hey, can you make one for me? So that's where he got the idea to start making masks to sell. And since then, 
he's he's been up in the states. He passed away a few years ago, but he's been invited to Chicago, to Los Angeles, to Boston, Philadelphia, and then these boys grew up learning that skill. And now they've uh, Avedo's been up here. Uh, this is his third trip to New England. He's been to Chicago. Uh, Modesto has been up to Seattle. He was there a couple years ago at the Seattle Center for an exhibition. So, and this whole program is sponsored by Margaritas. Has anybody here been to the restaurant of Margaritas? There's one in Waltham, Framingham. We decorate the art, uh, the restaurants with all sorts of really cool artwork that we get from Mexico. So, they're the sponsor of the tour. We were in uh, uh, Revere. Uh, last night, and they, uh, they, uh, Modesto has been working on a mask, one piece of wood, it's a devil with a complete skeleton on the front of it, and it's already been like, you know, eight hours to work on it, so it takes time. I should mention, after the class, we'll give you some time, they also make this neat little miniature mask that they sell, these are like a dollar fifty. Avedo, no sé si puede mostrar la herramienta. Sí. Ok, Avedo is going to be showing you the tools that he uses. The, throughout the day, different classes will see the, the phases that he, uh, to make a mask. Uh, lo primero que se utiliza es el machete. Se utiliza para limpiar, quitar la tecata de la madera. Ir dándole forma a la máscara. Es el machete. So the machete is used in the very beginning, as you can see, you flatten the back of it. Remember, this is an art project, so it has to be very proportioned. So you flatten the back, you remove the bark, and start to get the basic shape. If you don't have a good foundation, you're going to be fighting the whole mask the whole way. Luego, utilizo yo el angaro. Este, esta herramienta me sirve para vaciar la parte de de atrás donde va a entrar la, la cara es el angaro la cara what do you think la cara is you got the face part right yeah. la cara huh? your face is exactly. that yeah your face so that he said you scoop out that area in the back for your face to fit and it will also rough in the very beginning of the other shapes for the face of the mask. So your face has to fit there, and then the, you have to carve the face as well. Luego voy a utilizar la gurbia para acabar de vaciar la parte de atrás bien, donde no puede entrar el hangar. Se utiliza la gurbia, okay, la herramienta de mano. La gurbia is a, is a gouge that has a design so you can actually scoop there where the can't quite fit the angaro. And again, you use more to scoop the wood out from the back. Make sure your nose will fit in there. El formón. Este me sirve para agujerar en la parte de los ojos. Agujerar la boca. Y acabar de vaciar. Formón. The formón is used to, to carve out the eye, the opening for the eye holes and for your mouth and also to get a little bit more depth behind the mask. You can, you can pass this one out to get the idea. It's not able to use it. El canoyudo me sirve para rayar uh, la nariz, uh, las mejillas, y los dientes. El canoyudo. Okay. First of all, some Spanish words. Uh, nariz. What's a nariz? Nose. Nose. Okay. Dientes. Teeth. Teeth. Mejilla. Cheeks. Yeah. He uses that to, again, if you can see how that kind of yula would work, excuse me, you can see how it would go right around there to scoop out around the nose, you know, right around here to define the cheeks, around the lips. So those are specific tools based on the process in making the mask. Y por último se utiliza el tranchete. Esta es una herramienta muy filosa que me ayuda a limpiar la madera. Me ayuda a limpiarla y a darle el, el terminado. Que okay, tranchete es a hooked knife. Very useful tool. That broad blade allows him to almost plane and smooth out the wood. He's got that point to get to a lot of these detail areas, like the hair. There's little grooves all around there. Afiloso means extremely sharp. These tools
tools are so sharp you have to be extremely careful. Um, the steel is not a hard steel, it's homemade steel or homemade hand forged, so he's constantly sharpening the tools to keep an edge on them. Uh, his brother is demonstrating, uh, he's painting a mask that he carved a couple weeks ago. The masks are carved when they're uh, with a screen, so they let it dry out fairly, they sand it and paint it. Now, normally in Mexico they would be using automobile paint, they're uh, painted with some acrylics, uh, which are more easily, easier to clean up and don't have the heavy fumes. We don't want to be painted in here with like lacquer-based paints. Uh, it gets uh, pretty strong fumes. And so this is how they make their living. They're artisans. They carve every day. They sell to people who have galleries in the United States, in Mexico, in Europe. They sell to collectors who will actually travel all the way down to their house and buy the work. Um, and um, yeah, so there's different times of the year when they have ferias or craft fairs when people will show up and purchase the work. They each have four children. Uh, the youngest in Avedo's family is five, the oldest is 17. In Modesto's family, the youngest is nine, and the oldest is 19. And all of their children go to school, uh, just like you do. I mean, you would be in what's called the secundaria. Ustedes tienen hijos en la secundaria, ¿no? Y cuando ellos regresan de las clases, comen y luego ayudan a ustedes a ver. Sí, nos ayudan para el, ellos empiezan a ayudar a pulir con, con lija de papel a las máscaras y vas a poner bigotes en estas mascaritas, en algunas mascaritas que llevan bigotes, poco a poco empiezan a ayudar. Yeah, they come home from school and they have, you know, in Mexico you eat your main meal in the, in the middle of the day, so they don't have really like a hot lunch like you do. Have your meal, they do their homework, it's su tarea, and then they, if, you know, their dad has some work for them, they might sand uh, the mask. Some of them help uh, put in the, the whiskers and, and the animals. You can see now how he is using the angaro to, to scoop out the front of the face of the mask. Looks like that's going to be like the jaw area. He's going to make a skull for your people for the day of the day, which is, uh, Showing up, it's going to start up pretty soon. Aquí empezamos a darle esta parte de abajo. Ahorita voy a meter sobre en la parte de la mejilla. Y aquí arriba voy a llevar la paloma. He's going to put, um, he's done the, the mouth and the jaw row next. He's going to be start scooping around the cheeks and he's going to put a dove on top. All of these bills on the same piece of wood. Pretty cool. Uh, do we want to sh let's show the video? We have a video. You would have to sit here all day and um, and watch the whole process. But I was in Mexico and made a uh, let's do the hermano sports. You can watch that and you'll see the whole process. Studying. No, you can be studying.
ser calidad, no cantidad. A tratar de hacer las cosas bien. Tratar de, de evitar lo mejor que se pueda. Y tratar de hacer las cosas bien. Sierra Madre Range, about 7,000 feet above sea level. Wow. <coughs> now, um, <coughs> progress is made already on this. Now, it doesn't look like much yet, but he's got, he's getting the proportion that's going to be like sort of the nose of the skull, that's going to be the bird up top, cheeks, eyes right around there, so, and it's all done with that. I mean, it's, I'm watching over here, it's, it's amazing how, how it does that. And the wood is still very, very moist. Now, you saw just a few, in the video there, you saw just a few clips of the, pas the pastorelas, the, the fiesta that they uh, use these masks, uh, takes place on the 2nd of February, and it's all part of the, uh, kind of like the Christmas season. Many of the fiestas in Mexico take place on religious holidays, like, you know, obviously Christmas, Easter, even Day of the Dead. I know it's in your study guide. It's a combination of All Souls Day, and we, we, we can't even pronounce the, the, the Nahuatl word, but it's a festival that the Aztecs celebrated honoring uh, the, the dead of young people and older people. So it all takes place, you know, combining these different religious holidays. Thank you. So the devil, obviously, they wouldn't have used, they would have no context to a devil before the arrival of the Spanish. They would have used masks representing animals. You know, the jaguar, tigers, or panthers, you find them in southern Mexico. This is actually a mask made by the, uh, with the help of a huicholi Indians. So huicholis are these uh, tribes way up in the desert mountains outside of the Guadalajara region. And this is actually one of Avedo's panther masks, but they covered it with beeswax. And then pushed, the women do this artwork, then they push these beads individually into the wax, these geometric patterns. That represents a lot of work. ¿Cuánto tiempo para hacer esta máscara de huichol? La señora está hablando como un mes, mes y algo. Un mes, how long is un mes? Eighth graders, most basic still on your phone. So you had at the time of the before the time of the Spaniards, you would have had images of uh, animals just like our own Native Americans. Then they arrived with the Spanish, and one of the ways they taught the what they considered Indians or savages, uh, one of the ways they taught about European culture was through mass dances. So the devil represents you know evil. The snake, however, balances out the evil because the snake is a symbol for good luck. The uh, Ermitana, notice it looks doesn't look at all like a Mexican. So when you put on a mask, you want to attain the qualities that, that you don't have or that you want to represent of other people. So that's why they're, you know, they're fair skin, you know, blonde hair, big beards. Mexicans don't usually have a lot of you know beards. They, they wear bigotes, you know they, men put on, you know, grow mustaches and things, and hence the seats and those. Now this is actually a mask used, uh, you know, the style used by the Yaqui Indians in northern Mexico in the state of Sonora. So much more different, almost looks, you know, African or, you know, Polynesian. So this is a different kind of a mask. The hair is made from horse hair. They do come up with a neat design. This is a sirena, a mermaid. One side is a lady's face, the fish body. The other side is an actual fish. 
And there's a legend, there's a lake near where they live that there's a, supposedly a mermaid there. And then this was just a piece, they were experimenting with a, a piece of wood, this is a basswood, they just started making their own designs. Now I know it's not every, oh, I forgot to show you these, these are kind of cool. These are little patos, little ducks, and they're made from taking the reeds that grow in a nearby lake, they wrap them really tight with wire, and then they shave the, um, the, the reeds into the shape of a duck and then make a wooden head painted on top. And then of course there's some samples of fabric here. This is beautiful cross stitch work done by their wives and, and their uh, mother, Aina Dina. Now I know it's not every day that you have Mexican mask makers in your classroom and you guys get to see some really cool carving. So, uh, they like when people ask questions. You can ask in English, or you can practice your Spanish. So who wants to start off with a question for the artist? Yep, uh, what do they do if they mess up? What do they do if they mess up? ¿Qué hacen? ¿Qué, ¿Cómo arreglan ustedes si fallan en uh, una masa? Uh, bueno, o sea, casi no, no debemos de fallar, pero si algún defecto de la madera viniera dentro de ella, Cambiamos la idea de la cosa o la figura que vamos a hacer en, en la máscara. First of all, we're not supposed to mess up, but if we do, <laughs> usually it's a, a defect in the wood that might find a knot or some kind of a uh, twist in the grain, and they would have, they would modify the mask. Si es muy feo el la falla tiene que empezar de nuevo. Sí, si sale la madera muy mala, empezamos otra máscara. O sea, esa ya no la seguimos haciendo. Yeah, if it's really bad, you just have to start over and make another mask. ¿Cuántos años ya tienen trabajando? Yo tengo como 27 años, mi, mi hermano como unos 22. Ok, we know our numbers, 27 años. 27 years he's been carving, and his brother? 22. 22. See, that's a long time. I've been doing it for quite a while. Okay, more questions? You, you had one in the back, yeah. Have they ever cut off their finger? Have they ever cut off their finger? Have they ever cut off their dedos? Eso, hay ocasiones que estamos confiados y, y por decir se puede romper la máscara y termina la herramienta incrustada en la mano. Ah, ahí me pasó pues, entró por aquí y salió. Oh. Oh. Mi hermano también era. So, I mean, this is really, I mean, that's, a, that's an important question. I mean, part of this is, some people don't do it because they're just too...